All right. Grab your Bibles with me tonight. Go to the book of Joshua. Book of Joshua, chapter number one. I just want to talk to you guys for just a minute. You know, it's so awesome that we can get here tonight and we get to congratulate, we get to award you guys, right? Your kids. Right? It, it's so exciting. Um, some of the kids may not even know who I am. I'm Pastor Dan, right? I'm the pastor of this church, and I'm so glad that you guys have been here working hard and parents for helping out and encouraging and doing your part as well. You know, for the past 30 weeks, these young people have come here for the games. They have come here for the snacks. They have come here for the lessons. They have come here, but also, and most importantly, they have come and they've learned about Jesus Christ. They've come and they've hid his word in their hearts. They have memorized scripture. And how important that is because truly, they've been working towards a successful Christian life. And that's so important. In Joshua 1, verse number 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Let's pray real quick, and then we'll uh, listen to our little lesson. Lord, just thank you again uh, for all the hard work that has been awarded this evening. Lord, just the encouragement that it is uh, to see your word being memorized, your word being taught. Lord, I'm so thankful for the faithfulness of these young people. Lord, as they come here week after week, Lord, it is teaching them the importance of who you are in their lives. Lord, I pray that we as adults, uh, even in our uh, busyness of life, that we hold fast to that as well. Lord, as we look to this topic this evening, we're thankful for who you are. We ask you to bless our time in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's interesting in that verse, it says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. You know, it's interesting because that is holding his word in your mind, in your life, right? If you want to memorize a portion of scripture like these young people have, they have to be thinking about it, right? They, they, they have to be focused on it. Right, they, they have to uh, uh, do their little tricks, right? I, I used to teach in uh, Awanas, back when Awanas was the big thing. And some of the little kids, they would be walking back and forth with their, their books and they'd be trying to memorize the verses and they'd be working hard to hide his word in thy heart. And you know, it, it says that in this book, this book of his law, Right? What happens? Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. It's showing us, and Miss Belinda spoke to it, right? It, it is not just about knowing, right? It's not just about hearing and learning, but it's about applying the Word of God, right? It, it's about showing forth what we've learned. So meditating therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. All of the verses that you guys have been learning and that your parents are like, quit saying that verse, right? And, and all of the things that you guys have been hearing for the past 30 weeks, it says, this is important that you can observe to do according to all that is written therein. Right? That, that's why this program is so important and it's called Truth Trackers. Seeking the truth of God's word for your life, right? And as parents and as a church, it's our job now to come alongside them, come along behind them and say, man, how's it going? Good job. Way to continue on and keep at it, right? Why? Because this is how they base their life or it should be, right? Basing it upon truth. Basing it upon the word of God and doing so what happens for then, right then, after, you med after you're focused on the word of God 
After you're meditating, you're thinking upon the word of God. After you've learned to apply it, that you can observe to do according to everything that's in here, the Ten Commandments, right? The, the instruction of the Lord. When this happens, then it says, thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then what? And then thou shalt have good success. You know, a, a successful life so often gets twisted by what the world says that it is. If you don't have a giant house, if you don't have 20 cars, if you don't make all the money, right? If you don't have all of these things, then you're not successful according to the world. Right, modern day terminology, if you don't have three million followers, subscribers, right, you're not successful. But according to God, according to what his word tells us, the way to be successful, the way to be prosperous in life is to be thinking about his word. It's to be focused on his word. It's to be living his word out in our lives. Man, success is such an important part. As a parent, they would want for you, I would hope to be successful as an adult one day, right? My son got his certificate tonight, right? And I would hope that one day he is successful. Each adult in here, we would hope that our lives would be successful. But what are you basing success off of? Is it what the world tells us? Because it's important for us to think about. Or have we looked to the word of God and said, you know what? God thinks that I'm pretty successful, right? God thinks that I'm pretty well off. I mean, Joshua later in this book, he even confronts men and women. He stands before the children of Israel and he confronts them and says, you need to choose today who you're going to serve, right? Because that's the ultimate choice of our lives, that's the biggest decision any of us could make. We have to choose who we're going to serve. Later in scripture, we'll see what well, you can't serve two masters, right? You'll hate the one and like the other. You'll like the one and hate the other. The two are contra. It doesn't work that way. And what happens is when we begin to what? Take our focus off when we stop meditating on the word of God. When we quit focusing on what the Word of God says, when we quit observing to do what the Word of God says, in those moments, that is when our lives begin to be unprosperous. That's when our lives begin to be unsuccessful. You know, in God's eyes, success starts and it begins with a decision. You know, learning to observe and do according to all that is written therein, it takes time, right? For 30 weeks, right? Week after week, these young people showed up and they put in the time, right? They put in the effort, earning 2,000 points, 2,200 points, right? P putting in the work to learn the verses. Maybe it was just learning the games, Maybe it was learning to sit still, but they were doing so around the word of God. You know, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter number two, verses three and four says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our savior, who will have all men to be saved. Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Truth Trackers, our church putting on a program called Truth Trackers is about making sure that these young people know the truth of God's word, the truth about Jesus Christ. And God's word is there because why? He wants us to come to the knowledge of that truth, right? And what is the truth of God's word? Uh, understand with me this evening in the book of Romans, it says, for all have sinned 
Many of these young people have memorized this verse, Romans 3 and 23. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God's perfection is the standard for his glory, right? His heavenly domain, heaven above, the standard for even walking in the gates into the presence of God is perfection. That's what the word of God says. But it tells us in that verse that we just read that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, sinning is just doing something that God doesn't like. You, you know, there's often times that our children will do things that we don't like. As a parent, you'll say, yes, I know, right? As a church member, you'll say, yes, I know. I've seen that kid in the hall doing that one thing that I hate and despise, right? And it happens. But what he's saying here is sinning, doing something that God doesn't like, ultimately shows us how imperfect we truly are. Meditating on God's word, focusing on it in order to have a good, successful life starts with understanding. I don't meet God's requirements. Me, right? Not just, I'm not pointing fingers. I fell short. I have fallen short. I have been short. I'm not short right now, but I have been there. Right? And because of those things, but understand what happens next. But God Right? What happened? God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, right? Even when we were sinning against, we were unperfect, right? We, we were falling short of his standard. Even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ died for us, right? He sent his son to pay the ultimate price, Understanding this, for the wages of sin is death. That word death is talking about eternal separation from God. Right? Heaven, perfection, the ultimate place, right? Where everybody wants to go. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. Right? The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Right? That is what he was doing in that previous verse. God commanded his love toward us. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to pay our ultimate prize on Calvary while we were yet sinners. While we were still in that enemy status with God. And then what takes place in Romans 10 and 13, he says, understand with me that you have fallen short, but I still loved you enough to make a way for you to spend eternity with me in heaven. And he says, for whosoever, let's say anybody, right? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the greatest truth of the entire Bible, right? That's what Truth Trackers is ultimately about. That's why week after week we encourage these young people to come and learn God's word so that they can understand their whosoever. Right? They're who, I was whosoever. Many people here tonight, they were whosoever and they called upon the name of the Lord. That calling out is a recognition of the ultimate sacrifice that he did laying down his life. Right, that, that calling upon is, is believing in him and what he did and what it takes for me to become a saved individual. That, that, that calling upon the name of the Lord in doing that, believing that Christ came, he died for me, but he didn't stay down, he rose again. He, he paved a way, he made a way for me to spend eternity even though I've fallen short, even though my sin separated him. And the payment for that was eternal separation from God, death. But in that call and, and, and understanding the name of the Lord and I shall be saved, that's realizing that in that moment, even though my sin causes that death, the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
You know, this past Sunday, there was a huge NASCAR race. Right? And now, I mean, the legends, you, you don't even go there, right? It was crazy people driving through parking lots and jumping curbs and all the cones and police and they're navigating everything. I didn't even bother. I was like, nope. We had a carnival that was way better. <laughs> okay, but here it is. And understand, NASCAR's kind of a big deal. Right? I have worked at the racetrack in Phoenix, Arizona uh, a few summers, and it's crazy. Right? I was slinging t-shirts and all kinds of merchandise. But on Sunday, February 18th of 2001, one of the greatest NASCAR drivers was lost. Right? Dale Earnhardt. Right? The intimidator. Right? Dale Earnhardt, he was in third place. He was on the last lap of the Daytona 500 when his car was just tapped from behind. When his car was tapped from behind, it sent his car head on into a wall going 180 miles an hour. Right? So in that, that matter of moments, I mean, it was very evident something was terribly wrong with this situation. Dale Earnhardt had died in that crash. In that quick moment, I don't know how fast 180 miles an hour is, but it's like 180 miles an hour. <laughs> I mean, it was boom, right? But it was boom, crash. In that instant, Dale Earnhardt died, and on the following Monday, right, the autopsy came back, the report was sent in, and it said that he had died of just blunt force trauma to the head. He hit so hard in an instant, in just a brief moment. Can I, can I tell you that Dale Earnhardt truly was a tremendous driver? That he won a total of 76 Winston Cup races over a course of, of 26 years. Right? He, he, he uh, uh, became known as, as such a tremendous uh, adversary, but also just a great uh, driver to be on the track with. And even as great of a driver as he was, understand that. He's a good driver, right? He had those left turns down, so good, right? And here he was, this tremendous driver that everybody hailed, that everybody wanted to watch, that he was just awesome. In an instant, he wasn't here anymore. You know, things like that are why we have programs like this. Why? Because I don't know if I'm going to go out here and a truck is going to pull out and get me. I don't know if my brakes are going to go out and I'll end up in a ditch. I don't know how big that deer is going to be. Right? I don't know when, when that moment, when all of the sudden I am no longer here. But I don't know when that moment will be, but I can tell you where I'll be in that moment. I, I can tell you where I'll be because at one period of time, the same amount of time that it takes for you to go into eternity really could take you to make sure you know where you go in eternity. It's trusting in Christ. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. Right? Talia just said it. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son, right? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever. You know, verse 17 is, is one of my favorites. It says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't send him to be some dictator, to be some authority figure, to be some rule maker, to be some, you're bad, I'm good, you better get your life right. That's not why Jesus came, right? He came, why? But that the world through him might be saved. He wants nothing more than for every person to know that they're going to heaven when they die. For 30 weeks, 
your kids, these young people in our church have heard how they can know for sure that they're going to heaven. They have learned, they have studied, they have memorized verses showing them teaching them. I mean, I, I think of Psalms and, and so many portions of scriptures and Proverbs and all of these in Romans and, and John, and they teach us how to live a good life. And in doing that, what happens? Joshua tells us you're going to have good success. You're going to have a successful life by God's standards, by the ultimate standard, God's standard. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, I have never accepted Jesus Christ as my savior. If I was to die right now, I am not 100% sure that I would go to heaven. Hey, hey, just like Dale Earnhardt, you don't know. Just a small tap sent him into eternity. Just a small accident. That, that instant, that, that brief moment could send you into eternity, but it's important for you to know where you're going to be because there's only two options. There's no middle ground. There's heaven or hell. There's the you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior or you have denied him. You have said no. Say, I don't want to make that decision. Then you have just made the decision. When you ask your child to do something and you expect them to make that decision, if they say, I'm not going to make that decision, that is them telling you no. We know that as parents, as teachers. I need you to do this. I don't, I don't think I want to do that. That's you telling them no. But God is the ultimate teacher, the ultimate parent. And he says, I need for you to trust in me. I've made a way for you. And the question is, have you accepted that way for yourself? Have you come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? Do you desire to spend eternity in heaven? Or what's the alternative? Tonight, hey, I'm proud of these young people, teachers, good job. Right? I know there's some whispers, it's okay. Okay, hey, they've been attentive. They're like, I'm ready to go. I want some cake or whatever. Hey, it's been a tremendous 30 weeks. I'm encouraged and I pray for this group almost weekly just because I want them to know for sure they're going to heaven when they die. Because we don't know. Parents, grandparents, church, I want you to know for sure that you're going to heaven when you die. That's why... I'm here. That's why these teachers are here. I don't think it's just to get out of Wednesday night church. Understand with me tonight, it's up to you to make the choice. It is your decision to make. It's either heaven or hell. It's up to you. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Nobody's gonna be talking, guys. No one's looking around. Bow your heads, close your eyes. If you're here tonight, you say, I know if I died, I would go to heaven. Would you just put your hand up? You say, I know I'm going to heaven. That's wonderful, isn't it? The greatest decision, the greatest thing you could know in your life. Maybe you're here tonight, though. You could put your hands down. Maybe you're here tonight, though, and you say, you know, Pastor Dan, I don't know if I'd go to heaven when I died. I don't know that I have prayed and ask Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Pastor Dan, I don't know that, but I want to. Would you slip your hand up? You say, I don't want to go to hell. I see your hand, thank you. I see your hands. Hey, I, I don't know for sure that I'm going to heaven when I die, but I sure want to. I'm gonna pray for you. In just a moment, I, I'm gonna say um, a prayer is often referred to as a sinner's prayer. I encourage you to repeat after me if you don't know for sure you're going to heaven and you can know for sure walking out of here that you're going to heaven when you die, let me encourage you, if you say this prayer, come and talk to me after service. But if you're unsure, repeat after me, dear Lord, I know I've done wrong in my life. I've sinned. I know that the standard for heaven is perfection, 
that I've fallen short. Lord, I know that you sent your son to die for me. Lord, please forgive me of my sin. Lord, as best I know how, I ask that you be my savior. Lord, help me to live for you the rest of my life. Lord, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name.